Hi everyone, hope you're having a productive break. I've just prepared a quick tutorial for you on how to make a Revit presentation title sheet. I'm going to start by creating a Revit title block that is made for working drawings and then I'm just going to finish off by mucking around with a Revit presentation title sheet. So I'm going up to the big blue R, I'm coming down here to the title block family and I'm choosing A3 metric today. Typically I would start by drawing lines and you can see unlike the Revit project we've got a choice of only lines, no model lines nor detail lines. And when I click on this line I'm going to pop over here and I'm just going to choose one of these. So today it can be thin lines and I would start, I might actually use pick lines and use an offset. And I'm popping back and using my trim command, clicking on the ends of the line that I want to retain. Now I could keep going like this, however I've got an AutoCAD DWG file that I've used previously as a title sheet. So I'm going to insert that and then explode it and convert the line so that I can just keep going and make my drawings consistent to what I've always done. So if I come up to insert and import CAD, you can see here's my DWG and the only things I'm going to change down here are inverting the colours so that it appears easier to see in Revit against the white background and the import units. Yes. Now I'm going to move this into position. I'll need to unpin this first. That happens automatically when AutoCAD drawings come in. And I'm using my move command by selecting my object, clicking on the bottom right and then using that as a base point to move it to where I want that to be. Now this appears as what people might remember as a block. I'm going to explode this information and you can see that what I'm left with is individual lines and text. So if we click on it, Revit's already turned that into information that it can use. And in fact, I'm just going to tweak that slightly and make that a more consistent two millimetres. I might rename that. renaming it to Arial 2mm. So by renaming it rather than duplicating it, you can see that all of them have been automatically updated and automatically got the different name. Now I'm going to convert these lines. So you can see if I click on them, they're green for a start, and I don't really know, that's the layer name, so I don't really know what size they're going to print. But if I select all of these lines just by using a window, and I come up and click my filter in my contextual tab, you can see that I can just hit tech, check none and uh, choose these lines here, which I know have come straight from the title sheet, and I can tell all of them to be thin lines, which I'm happy with. Oh, sorry, I lost concentration for a minute. Where were we? Labels. Now the labels are the most important part of this because you put them in properly and they're going to make sure that all of the information that you put in in your project information gets shown correctly on every title sheet and it makes it easier and faster of course. So I'm coming up to the create button and you can see here's our label but before I start I want to create a couple of different types. It's exactly the same as creating a type for text. So I'm going to type, duplicate, and I want to create three, aerial four millimeter, three millimeter, and two. So I've duplicated, given it a name. I don't need to change the font. I'm changing this to four millimeter. Now I'm going to create another two and just put you on pause. Now once I've created these labels, all I need to do is click on the screen where I want to position them. And you can see this time, what happens is a little dialog box appears and I've got some fields, some parameters to choose from. So the one I just wanted was project name. So you can see that I'm going to choose project name by either double clicking or clicking on this little green arrow to add it over here into our label parameters. Now occasionally I have added spaces and prefix and suffixes. 
So it might be um, A at the start of the sheet name so that it always says A for architectural or something like that as a prefix. So there have been times when I've used that. Now I'm going to move it into position. I'm expanding this out. Make sure that you allow enough room in this box because the project name might actually be quite big. So give it as much room as you want that text to take up. And this one's aerial full. Now I'm going to do the next one and then the rest of them should be fairly straightforward. Predominantly because I've already written up the little bits of text that are describing the label here, which are going to remain on my drawing sheet. So create, label. This one I only need to be 3 millimetres, which I created previously. And I'm clicking over here because I actually want this one to be right justified. So you can see if I want this project number, which is available here, I could also make this right justified as I create it. Not too late, sorry. Or I can come over here to the properties and change this from left to right. And obviously I can adjust that within the top and middle as well and bottom. Just move this one into position. I'm actually doing this by eye. All right, I might show you the sheet number like I was talking about before. Create label. I'll make this quite a large one. Four millimetres. I might even need to go bigger, actually. Edit type duplicate. Just all I need to do is make sure that my five matches whatever the label is here. All right, so in this situation, I'm going to create it. It was sheet number. Some people refer to this as drawing number, so I guess that's the trickiest part of the whole thing, just trying to work out what they're calling their fields or their parameter names. So sheet number, and I'm going to give this one, because it's a working drawings drawing, a prefix of WD. Click position. Again, I'd like this one to be right hand justified. I'm happy for that. Move this across so it doesn't go beyond that. Now the scale, I said I was only going to do one more, but I, I lied. Let's have a look at the scale. Yep, right hand justified. You can see it's trying to line everything up for me here, which I want. Now the scale gets automatically updated once you drag a drawing into it. At the moment it says here uh, sample value and you can see it's written in inches. It will automatically update to big, sorry. It will automatically update once you've got your, uh, once you've set your units to metric if that's what you want. Okay, so I can continue on here and set up the rest of the, sh the dates and all of the other information that will need to appear here. You could allow a couple of lines for the address if you wanted or certainly make enough room. There's room here for revisions. Uh, revisions can be set up to be automatic so that you can put in your revision cloud and Revit understands which revision it's working in. That's not something we'll go in now, but I just thought I'd mention it. 